Today we're talking about living from heaven. Now, let me tell you, I've got so much to say about this, but this is only going to be about 15 to 20 minutes long, okay? But it's going to be potent, and I'm telling you, it's going to be life-changing when you understand this. Living from heaven. Here we go. If you look at the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is a blueprint of how we should live from heaven. Okay, if you just understand a simple verse in Hebrews 9, we are going to get just to one Bible verse, but it's all over Hebrews. And then I'm going to talk about a bit of science, something called neuronal place cells and why it is connected to this scripture and your life and how you will be able to draw from what I'm saying and model your life so that things can not only look better, but you yourself can draw on the spiritual heavenly realm onto this earth and live a faster, better, more powerful, and even longer life. We're going to discuss that. How does long life and lasting life start manifesting in your mortal body? The Bible says that the spirit or the heavenly realm quickens your mortal body. Okay? That means your nervous system somehow aligns with what is in the realm of the spirit or if you want to call it the vast mind or if you want to call it the heavenly celestial realm. It means not the natural realm. Okay, And so there's a scripture right here in the Bible in Hebrews and if you go into verse 24, it says, For Christ has not entered the place in heaven that is made with human hands because the one made with human hands were just copies of what is true but he has entered the heavenly place that's what it says here he has entered the true place but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of the i am god for you individually now here's how i'm going to break that down for you and when you see it it's beautiful what he's saying the first thing that you need to understand is he's talking of christ okay and i know it's a story for you that happened two thousand years ago but he's talking about it as a now, a kairos moment for you now. Literally saying, though it happened 2000 years ago, this thing is happening for you now. Because as you leave the realm of time and space, what happens is you go deeper in. So we call it in, in or up, up. And as you go deeper in, you leave the nervous system's ability to track time and space in the way that you do it on Kronos Earth. So you tap into a place that is heavenly, spiritual, and the deeper you get in there, what happens is you let go of time and space. In fact, it, is, it can be a gradual way you let go. So you can say the deeper into the realm of the spirit, the deeper into the realm of the mind, you want to call it, the vast mind of Christ, or the deeper in uh, to heaven you go, the faster time and space is. Let's put that, space becomes smaller and faster. Because if you can get somewhere faster, it means it becomes smaller. Okay, did you just get that? Okay, so literally what is happening is you're going into a place where the density is so small because it's so fast. Think about that for a moment. Now, as we discuss this in this way, I'm going to give you scientific concepts and why it is connected to your youthfulness and for you to start age reversing literally by tapping into this space called the heavenly space. The Christians call it the heavenly space. Okay, Let your kingdom in heaven come upon the earth. It said that this space can invade the earth and it can change the matrix of what your nervous system is projecting as reality, literally. Scientists today say that what we see as reality is just a visual projection of your nervous system of how you have measured things. Okay, simply let me explain it to you like this. If you talk about getting from A to B in a certain distance, today we talk about it in 100 meters, you might take, if you start running, you might take 1 minute, 40 seconds, 20 seconds to run that 100 meters. Sometimes if you're really fast, you might get 15 seconds, maybe even 12 seconds, okay? But there are people who make that in 9 point something seconds now. Okay, that's really interesting because once you make it at that speed, it means that space just got smaller. So your nervous system understands that space is smaller. When you get older and more frail and fragile, okay, you take a longer time to make that 100 meters. Think about that. So that becomes 
a longer distance. But here's the interesting thing, that if you can get there at light speed, or at thought speed, which is light speed, okay, that means your nervous system starts connecting to you in a completely different way. So is it better for us to spend time in the heavenly place that Christ has gone before us? That's what the Bible says. That means, and we, we disconnect from that. We think that happened 2000 years ago, but it means that there's a Christ in every single man. There's a Christ in you today. It means that the Christ in you has literally now, at this moment of time, entered the heavenly space beyond the whale, which is the body. Come on, I hope you got that. The whale is the body, the nervous system. Just get that, okay? And that means the Christ in you has gone beyond the whale into this space called heaven. There is no time and space. Those are the semantics in the, the, the Greek word or the English word is heaven. But actually, if you look at the Greek word, it means the spiritual, celestial, the vast mind of God. Okay. And the more you can tap into that space, there's a correspondence of being there and experiencing there that happens to our nervous system. Think about that. Okay. And this is now becoming science. So literally saying that Christ in you, okay, has gone as a mediator for the man on the ground, the nervous system, your visual sensors, your uh, sensors to hear, your, um, your olfactory sensors to, to smell, your touch sensors. The, the man on the ground in the natural world on the earth, okay, is connected to the Christ that is in heaven, which is you, okay. Now what happens is this being called the Christ has gone beyond the whale, which is the flesh. And he's traversing there at light speed. Okay, so what happens is there's something that happens to your nervous system when he starts experiencing and constantly experiencing the heavenly realm, okay, or the spiritual realm. And that correspondence to the nervous system can definitely change the way the nervous system itself resources, energy, life, healing, and restoration on the physical body. Okay, so this prayer, let your kingdom in heaven come upon the earth, now becomes a reality because it's a filter from that no time and space realm into now this realm from Kairos to Kronos. Think about that for a moment when you understand this verse, okay? That Christ has entered in beyond the whale to a place and a space or no space and no place actually, okay, that is timeless, that is called eternity. And as your Christ has entered into that place, what happens is the nervous system starts changing on the earth and he's done it for you. He's, it says he's doing it for you. And that is how your errors or your pattern, the word sin is hamataya, which means errors, starts getting shifted and changed on the earth. Okay, and that is how healing, miracles, signs, wonders, all these, uh, these spiritual experiences that people call actually might have a connection with physics itself and might have a connection with neuroscience itself so that those connections, the more you dwell up into that realm, where you're disentangled from this realm, something can change in the realm that you touch feel and see. Literally, in that space, there's no time. So age and old age can, might be able to, okay? Might be able, this is just a hypothesis, a theological, uh, a neurotheogic uh, explanation, okay? Uh, a neurotheogical explanation of how we might be able to reverse some of the effects of the world if we make, if we know how to enter into a space that they, or a place where it's no, not placeable or not timeable. Think about that for a moment. Now, I'm going to tell you something very, very interesting. Scientists today have found out something called place neurons or place cells. This is a very, very interesting concept. And the place cells or the place neuron means that when you go and traverse into any area, there's a map a mapping that happens in your brain, literally with neurons that fire very specifically to the salience or the place where you are. So if you're, if you're an athlete and you're running round, let, let's see, let's say a field, okay? And it's a 400 meter or one kilometer field. Just say it's a one kilometer field. As you go into every single area, there are different neurons in your brain that starts mapping and firing according to exactly where you are. 
check this out. Okay, so once that has been done, every time you finish one lap, it even notes that you're on the second lap. Now, this is very interesting because it's not only tapping into and understanding the place, it's also understanding the salience of the time. And according to how fast you're running, it even knows when you will finish. If you're going to run five kilometers, there is something called the ACC in your brain, which is the anterior cingular cortex. And this thing even maps out and gives you the resources, the energy that you need to do the five kilometer run. So it, that means it resources the food that you ate, it resources all the neurochemicals that you need at that moment to be able to make you get enough boost of energy to finish the five kilometer run. Think about that for a moment now. And now let's talk about the race of long life. Does the place cells, does the, the cells that have to do with mapping out a distance in time and space, do they play a role? Can the ACC and anterior cingular cortex, I'm not even saying it does, but I'm saying I'm just submitting these things to the, to the, to the theological world, but also to the neurotheogic world. Is there a place where these place cells, and not only the place cells, they're also, they work saliently with time. And also, can it actually, can these things actually resource all the energy in life that you need for you to live longer if you set a distance and a time? It's a good question. If you say, look, we're going to live for 100 years or 120 years or 150 years, isn't it the same as setting your time for a run of five kilometers? Okay, now I'm getting good timings on my five kilometers right now. I'm getting maybe like, I should be able to finish your five kilometers by 26, 27. Okay, and that's better than uh, I've ever done before. And I'm 47 years old. Okay. Now that's crazy, okay? So just understand that by setting that five kilometers and I can finish it in 26 or 27 minutes, that means that can we also set, that means there's a, there are place cells and there are neurons that resource, there are brain areas that resource me to run those five kilometers and plan to finish in a certain amount of time according to the training I've done, according to what I've eaten. So is it possible then for us to plan just like a five kilometer run does the same neurocircuitry and the physiology come into play when we set a target line of finishing a race in life? Now Paul calls it the race of life. Okay, we finish the race of life. Does the same neurochemicals, the same neurocircuitry come in to resource how much energy we need, how much food we need to eat, how much uh, um, uh, supplements we need to take, whatever I'm trying to say, or how much if, if you're a believer, how much meditation you need to do, okay, how much prayer you need to do, how much your mind needs to be at the right support system for peace for you to finish that race because an athlete needs to be calm, okay, to have all the right hormones to finish that race. Otherwise, you're going to get lactic acid and all that kind of stuff. I just want to show you that all this is resource when you give your life a goal. How long are you going to live for? Okay, just imagine this. If you get, if you does it five kilometers, if you does it at 21 kilometers, okay, time and space, these cells, then could it do it for 100 years, 120 years, 150 years? Think about it while I'm talking. Those of you who love long life and understand the doctrine of immortality and long life. Just imagine this. It's amazing. Okay. So my, my submission to you is that there are place neurons, and this is, in, this is scientifically now proven, that literally maps a region of space and time to give you exactly the experience that you need to finish that exact race or that exact moment. And the experiment they did was with rats. And they realized that these rats had these place cells in their hippocampus. So they make sure that there are uh, electrodes that are placed into their brain. And the rat was literally put on a treadmill that was virtual. So it's, it's a real treadmill, but he's having a virtual reality experience. So he's really, really running in one place. Okay, now just imagine this. If you were in the realm of the spirit or in heaven or in dreamland, I just want you to experience the same thing. You're the rat now. Okay. And while he's running, okay, on this treadmill, what is happening is he's thinking because of the virtual reality experience he's having. Okay. He's thinking that he's actually covering distance. And at the end of his race, okay, he's supposed to make sure that he eats some food or he some, licks some, some, uh, some, something sweet or something like that. Okay. And so the, 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 the rat 
knows when he's about to finish because he's going to now get his reward. It's like a person who's running a five kilometer race and at the end, he knows that he's going to get a dopamine hit, okay, and a serotonin hit when he finishes the race simply because it's now finished, okay? And so, what about long life? Can we think about the same way in long life? Like when we are living our lives, okay, can we also, when we are getting older and stronger, is there something that is playing in, in our neurochemicals and our body that we are feeling stronger and there's more oxytocin and all the good neurochemicals coming in, making us feel better, okay? And what they realize is the place cells and the place circuitry in the brain really maps it out, though he's in one place, literally maps it out like he's actually moving in time and space and they call it the place field. Okay, that he's actually finishing a race and there are neurons that fire at the beginning of the race, okay? And there are neurons that fire in the middle of his run and there are neurons that fire at the end of his run, all separate neurons. Just imagine this, okay? So, then what they did was they looked to see if they could actually stimulate the neurons that trigger at the end of his run, okay? Watch this, at the beginning of his run. And you know what happened? when they started stimulating externally the neurons, once they mapped it out and they realized these are the neurons that fire at the end of his run, he's about to get his reward and he's about to stop. When they trigger the neurons that get activated at the end of the run, artificially, externally, at the beginning, the rat stops the race. Think about that. Now watch this. And this is why sports will change in the future. I think when Elon Musk puts his, the chip in, in everyone's brain, okay, and starts triggering neurons, okay, sports will change forever because what happens is if they trigger the neuron that fires in the beginning of the run, okay, watch this, at the end, when the rat really is, is going on and thinking he's finishing, if they trigger that neuron, he goes past the finish post and doesn't stop to eat or get his reward because he's thinks that he's just started the race. Man, now let's talk about heaven. Let's talk about you and I being able to tap into the heavenly realm. And in mystery school, we teach people to build the internal castle and to live in moments where they can transcend, repent, change their mind, go beyond the material. The, uh, the repent means going beyond matter, going beyond the whale that is the flesh and spend time in the internal castle, the secret place, which we call it in mystery school, and how they can spend time there and how they, they measure the salience of how fast they move. They measure the salience of what that walk looks like. And you'll realize that when the body realizes in a place of no time and space that he's faster and better, it has an effect on the reality natural realm. The developing meditations as well so that you can now live in that space for at least a little time of the day. And if you can live young and in that little time of the day, your body will feel like you have just started your race of life. Okay, because this now is science. And so what right here is in Hebrews, that your Christ, you have a personal Christ inside of us, is now entered into beyond time and space, into this place, into this space, that is actually a place of heaven that is completely different to the time and space realm here, okay? Once he enters into that place and that space, we call it the internal castle, okay, the dynamics are completely different. The time and space is completely different. And if he lives there and moves there in certain ways that are salient, guys, the nervous system doesn't know the difference. And the nervous system reverses its capability of finishing the race and actually starts off again like he's young, youthful and strong. Now this can be applied to so many areas of our life, guys, okay? So spend time in the realm of the spirit. It's faster and it's better and it's younger and it's greater. Blessings.